The air is electric at the 2017 NFR, and I'm finally headed down the bucking chutes for the Thomason Macarena. I'm about to give a cowboy the toughest ride of his life. I get set in the bucking chute, and Tim O'Connell lowers himself down on my back. I tense up, the gate opens, and the crowd explodes as I leap out and buck as hard as I can, twisting and turning. My explosive performance earns us a 91.5, winning the third round. By the way, I'm Bar C5 Rodeos Virgil, a 1,450-pound, 17-hand gray giant, and I am the 2017 Bareback Horse of the Year. Hello, I'm Katie Sheely, a senior member of the Douglas County 4-H program. Rodeo, known as the toughest sport on dirt, has some amazing athletes, but the animal athletes are probably the most remarkable. Rodeo saddle and bareback bronks are no exception. Today, I would like to talk to you about the history of bucking horses in rodeo, explain the ins and outs of the bronc riding events, breeding and stock contractors' involvement with today's bucking horses, and finally, introduce you to some of the top bucking horses in the world. Like most of the events in rodeo, saddle bronc riding and bareback riding has its roots with cattle ranching and the western way of life. Bronc riding was originally based on the need to break horses to work cattle. Cowboys would get together to work on their skills of bronc riding. Predictably, unofficial competitions arose to see who was the best bronc rider. Thus, the beginnings of saddle bronc riding as a sport. Naturally, bareback bronc riding soon followed and it developed into a professional rodeo event around 1900. Cowboys started out riding two-handed, simply holding on to the horse's mane, known as a mane hold. Other methods use a loose or twisted rope or multiple handhold of leather rigging based on a surf single. It wasn't until the 1920s that the old rodeo rules allowing two-handed riding was replaced with one hand free in the air and one hand on the rigging like the modern day rough riding we see today. That leads us to what the event looks like today. The events of saddle broke riding and bareback riding have developed into very skilled and masterful sports. Let's go over the basics of the events and some of the equipment that is used. Firstly, the biggest and most obvious difference is that saddle bronc riding uses the saddle and rope, where bareback riding uses a rigging. The saddle used in the saddle bronc event has no horn and has free swinging stirrups. The rider grips a simple, thick ring made from cotton or polyester that is attached to a leather halter. The rider competing in the bareback event has no saddle and no ring, but uses a rigging that resembles a suitcase handle made of rawhide and leather. The rigging is attached to a surf single and placed just behind the horse's withers. The only equipment that is used in both events is the flank strap. This is a four inch wide strap covered in sheepskin that fastens behind the widest part of the horse's abdomen. It is used to enhance the horse's bucking action. Although both events require riding skill and a great deal of strength, the bareback ride is somewhat wild and uncontrolled, whereas the saddle bronc ride is more precise and graceful. The rider must be perfectly synchronized with the horse and every movement should be fluid. Both events have the same basic rules and requirements of the rider. First and foremost, the rider must stay on for eight seconds. They must use one hand to remain securely seated and must not touch any part of the horse or himself with his free hand. The rider must also mark out the horse on the first jump from the chute. This involves the rider having both heels placed above the point of the horse's shoulders and remain there until the horse's front hooves hit the ground. If this mark out is missed, the rider receives no score. Both events are also scored in a similar manner. Each have two judges that score a total of 50 points, 25 points for the horse's bucking action, and 25 points for the cowboy's spurring action and control. So a perfect ride would be, you guessed it, 100 points. In order to achieve a high score, a cowboy needs to have a good spurring action that moves from the point of the shoulder to the back of his saddle with his toes turned out. They'd also score higher according to the rider's rhythm and timing with the horse's bucking. But because he is also dependent on the ability and performance of the horse he draws, he could ride perfectly, but still not score high without a great bucking horse. When scoring the horse, judges look for how hard the horse tries to buck its rider off. A horse will score high when it changes direction, spins, rolls, or twists, because it is a lot harder to ride when bucking sideways. A horse that bucks effectively and with impressive moves will score much higher than one who bucks in a straight line with no significant changes in direction. So where do these amazing athletes come from? The first horses that were used for rodeo were the ranch horses that just had a tendency to buck. 
Many come from feedlots, ranches, racetracks, and any other disciplines. That's horses, they're thought to be untrainable for their given discipline. Stock contractors are who supply the horses for the rough stock events in a rodeo, and they are often contacted by owners of these untrainable horses, and they will take them on. But more often in today's rodeo world, horses are specifically bred to buck. Horses used for the bareback event are smaller and have a wilder bucking style. A larger horse, often draft horse crossbreeds, are used for the saddle bronc event due to the more classic style bucking that allows the rider to sit up in the saddle and get a rhythm. Both, however, have to have the desire to buck, whether it's in personality or instinct. According to Binion Survey, a bucking horse will tell you which event they prefer to be in with their bucking pattern. If the horse fights a halter when the cowboy pulls on the rein using saddle bronc, then they definitely need to go in the bareback. The ability and heart of each horse is shown with their bucking pattern. Out of all the great human athletes, only a small percentage ever rise to the top. Horses are no different. As John Brownie, 2000 PRCA Stock Contractor of the Year said, it's their instinct and how they think. In their own little way, they just know how to be better and know that if they put their best foot forward, they're gonna win. The good ones, they win almost all the time. They just have that desire to win. Breeding definitely does play a part though. Born to buck breeding programs have been developed purposely in breeding for bucking. These sophisticated programs are run by nearly half the roughly 60 PRCA stock contractors. Many of these stock contractors belong to the Bucking Horse Breeders Association, whose mission is to reserve the pedigrees of the world's premier bucking horses, generate or promote interest in the bucking horse industry, and to help develop programs and incentives to educate the members and the general public of the legendary heritage of Rodeo Sequin Athlete. Even though breeding is important, a stock contractor's instincts and gut feelings about a certain horse is key to a good bucking horse. Simple experience can tell them what separates the elite buckers from the rest of the herd. So let's take a look at some of those elite buckers. Midnight is the first Saddle Bronc Hall of Famer I'll introduce you to. He was a big, black, gentle giant whose lightning-like leaps kept him champion for 14 years. No man buck from midnight was ever trampled, which earned him the reputation of being a gentle giant. In fact, one story was told how in Nebraska rodeo, after a cowboy was thrown from midnight and knocked unconscious, he stopped bucking, trotted over to the man, and nearly nuzzled him before trotting onto the corral. According to Vern Elliott, midnight's co-owner, no cowboy ever put up a qualified ride on midnight, except when he was sick. But midnight was never counted as successfully ridden during his career. He was inducted into Pro Rodeo's Hall of Fame in 1979. The title of PRCA Bucking Horse of the Year in each of the first three years of its inception was bestowed upon a quarter horse pinto named Warpaint. His career lasted almost two decades, and he had close to a 90% buck off rate. He died in 1975 and is forever preserved through taxidermy right here in Pendleton at the Pendleton Roundup Museum. He was inducted in the Hall of Fame in 2011. There is one and only one horse that has won both PRCA Bareback Horse of the Year and Saddle Bronc Horse of the Year titles. Big Ben Rodeo Company's legendary mare, Spring Fling. She won Horse of the Year for Bareback first in 1967 and then switched to Saddle Bronc and won in 1997, and then switched to Saddle Bronc and won in 1999 and again in 2000. Three years in a row, she was voted top horse at the Dodge National Circuit Finals Rodeo. Her co-owner, Don Hudson, described her success best. She just kicks real hard and jumps real high. They either win the rodeo on her or get bucked off. She was inducted in the Hall of Fame in 2011. Now that we've covered a phenomenal horse that can do both events, Let's talk about some bareback broncs. High Tide, kind of the old man of bronc horses, was selected the buck at the NFR a whopping 21 times, starting in 1967, and was 38 years old at his last appearance. He was the top bareback horse in 1975 and appropriately retired at the 1986 NFR. He was inducted in the Hall of Fame in 1993. Finally, we arrive at the reigning bareback horse of the year, who just happens to also be the two-time reigning by Round Horse of the Year in the Canadian Professional Rodeo Association. Virgil's original owner, John McNeely, named him after one of the Earp brothers from the film Tombstone. Since C5 Rodeo Company bought him, he has been 90 points under multiple riders. 
Austin Foss scored 88 on Virgil last August, and he told the PRCA, he's a horse that bucks every time. If a guy's doing his job, you're going to win on him every time. Both of his appearances at the Wrangler NFR in 2017 were money-winning rides for the Cowboys. One at 91.5, winning the third round, and contributing to Tim O'Connell's world champion title. The world of rodeo has an amazing history, but the animal athletes that are a rich part of that history are the true stars. Today, I hope I gave you a little more insight into the history of bucking horses and rodeo, a clearer understanding of rodeo's bronc riding events, how breeding and stock contractors have contributed to the bucking horses today, Finally, increase your familiarity with some of the top bucking horses in the world. If you remember all the horses I introduced you to, you'll recall that all of them have been inducted in the Pro Rodeo's Hall of Fame, except the last one, Virgil. But you keep your eye out. I bet you'll see him in there someday. Thank you for your time today. My resources were Western Horsemen, www.cowboyway.com, www.bhpioneer.com, prorodeo.com, Great Falls Tribune, www.prorodeohallofame.com, and lasvegasnfr.wordpress.com. Are there any questions?